like the recording has begun. I'm a few minutes past my 7.30 time. I took a minute to make sure my camera was oriented the right way and everything I needed was in the shot. So we should be good to go this time. So the two cards I'm going to show you tonight, my cute and quick Christmas cards are these ones. A blue snowflake one with a custom envelope and then a branches kind of um, winter scene Christmas card with some bits of bling there and then I forget about this a lot but a coordinating um, embossed envelope so I am happy to have remembered that trick and uh, yeah pretty quick and easy uh, envelope embellishment um, so we'll start with the woods card first and my supplies I need are the envelope and I cut my paper this way first so when you've got your eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper you're gonna want to have it the landscape way the eleven inch way and you're gonna want to score it at five and a half and then you turn it and you cut at four and a quarter and then you'll get your card going the tall way um, I think that's portrait Either way, the tall way. Um, and then for the top layer, you want it to be just a quarter of an inch border. So you're going to want this to be four inches by five and a quarter. And then we will use the woodland embossing folder for both, both of these. And then I use the two and a quarter inch circle punch for the red glimmer paper and then the two inch punch one of our three punches circle punches still in the holiday catalog or in the catalog in general so that's two and a quarter inch and then two inches for this and the merry christmas sentiment is from perfectly plaid Ooh, i wonder if this is current i keep a lot of um past christmas sets but either way you can find a merry christmas or or some other holiday stamp that'll fit in that circle as a pretty big circle so i used this one if it's not still current which i don't think it is um you'll find something and then i used the memento black ink for that and you'll need some dimensionals to pop it up and this one yeah i wasn't having a class in mind at first so i used some retired um faceted gems i think they're called but we have a really good gold um glimmer dots that's an easy substitution that is current in this holiday catalog so we've got some things ready to go to replace my accidental retired products. Um, so then, um, because this woodland folder is a thin one, you don't need to spray your paper with water like those thick folders. So I'm going to bring the folder over just to show you how I line up this one, and then I will quick go over and emboss these off camera. Um, so this is technically the bottom, but I think the way the branches go, it kind of turns out that, I'll just show you, that when you put this in here, so you're going to unfold your envelope and then you're going to, um, you can kind of use, yeah, you're going to line it up when it's closed and you just line up the edge of the folder with your seam and then you want to run it like this and so then when we take this out you're going to have your branches going up so that's kind of fun and so i'll take a quick second to go emboss these Okay, and then you just turn your paper, 
you know, it comes out like this and you turn over and you've got that one. And then beautiful embossed raised design there. So I don't want to get my envelopes mixed up. So then we can use liquid glue or the new seal, whatever you prefer. And you can have it the debossed or the embossed. They both will look cool. I'm going to have the raised or embossed side up. When I use liquid glue, I do a line around the edge, and then I kind of swoop it through the middle. Put that one nice and centered. Get out my ink. With black especially, I always do a practice one first. And sometimes you stamp first and then die cut or emboss, but on circles I think is pretty easy and I wanted to prep a little bit ahead of time. There, that came out super great. With black you can use the stamp apparatus in case you don't get a nice uh, crisp image and then you can stamp exactly in your same spot again without um, having any mess up. And we'll lay this one straight down without any raised, I mean, no dimensionals. With black, you give it a second to dry before rubbing over it because it will show so quickly if you smear it. Okay, that looks good. And then a couple, usually with a circle, I just kind of do it in a triangle shape and then you can get away with just three. Like that one, you can arrange it wherever you want. I just like something about the bottom right hand corner. A little bit like a quarter of an inch edge border. Tap, tap, tap. And then all we have to do is the dots. This really is quick. Um, so yeah, when I did 12 of these, that came together pretty quickly. So I've got my take your pick tool and I'm going to use some of the bigger ones. So down here, whoops, and then a little bit, uh, maybe there, and then um, up a little bit. All right, and then I did a retired sentiment from, it's like a candle one, it's just the loop to some of the, that's like the classic Christmas account in the Bible. This um, one of my favorite um, accounts. Okay, so then um, that's that card. I won't stamp an inside sentiment because you can choose yours. Um, so we got those two. It's got to slow down for a second. I have, I think it's called the sciatic nerve when you're pregnant and your lower back acts up and when I'm bending over it really aggravates it and then I try to stand up and I have like a shooting pain and I have to go slow for a second. Um, I think when I have a chiropractor adjustment that will help. So next week. Um, okay so then we have our blue Christmas card. And I've got my um, square cut. When we come to the envelope, I'll show you and explain how you figure out what size square for what size envelope. Um, and then this one is four inches square. So when you cut it, you're going to want to have eight inches across, score at four inches, and then, so yeah, eight inches by four inches, and you score the long side at four inches. And then don't bend it until you've glued it down. It's a lot easier to work with a card when it hasn't been folded. Then it won't kind of pop up at you. Um, so then you got your glue for the back. Oh, yeah, your glimmer paper is 4x4. Four four. It covers the whole front. And then that works super great because if you do mass produce, the glimmer paper comes in the 12x12 12 12 sheets. So if you're cutting it by 4 inches, you won't have any waste. You'll get um, 9 so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, out of a sheet of glimmer paper. So before I set it down really quick, I will check the other side. Yeah, everything is covered. Okay. 
so so pretty i don't know if you see the blue on camera when i took a picture of it earlier it kind of looks silver but it is a really nice light blue it's a balmy blue from our colors um, and then your um what's this called dsp is from the snowflake suite i can't think of the name right now maybe i'll look it up at the end but then that's just a quarter and shorter so three and three quarters by three and three quarters and it does have a a wave of color some parts are darker i chose the lighter sections because i thought it looked better and this is also just oh yeah we have to die cut it so we have to take from the so many snowflakes dies and they don't come on the magnet sheets i take them out of the original packaging and put them on that because you can see them so much better so i'll go over and die cut this quick but i'm just going to line it up in the middle um point to the top and bottom um, and then um, then we'll use just glue or snail to, or seal to put that down What I really love is with our new um, stamp and die cut and emboss machine, even these detailed dies, one pass through it and it has cut everything out except for these tiny little dots in the middle you could run through with your die brush, um, but they're cut out, they just didn't fall out. And then I'm going to cover that up anyway, so I don't even have to take the time to do that. Um, but yeah, it is super nice having the new machine. All the ones that used to have a couple passes through the dies through the machine or use a shim, like an extra piece of paper to give it more um, pressure, you don't need to anymore. So it's so much faster. Okay. All right. And we'll... Stamp our sentiment and flag the edges. This balmy blue is pretty new. It still seems like a new color to me, but I think it's a couple years already. I think it came with the color refresh two years ago, but it still seems newish. And you always want to flag with something that's very tight like this, flag after you stamp. So then you know, I kind of did halfway from the words to here. Just a very minimal, not a very deep V. Cut up half, and then you cut to match from the corners to the point. It's hard doing this a little bit further away and not getting my head too close. But... There. There, that's a nice crisp cut. There. That's what I like. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to do an inside sentiment. I'll do that quick before I forget. Um, so on this card, I did, um, I like to do uh, Jesus once. So I used a retired one too. Um, but because there's an inside sentiment from the Snowflake Wishes that fits with our card, I thought I would use that one. Um, so it is May Your Season Sparkle. Since we've got the glimmer paper, I thought that'd be nice to making sure that I stamp on the correct side right towards the top so there's a little room to write a personal message. Oh, got that nerve again. Okay, now I can close this. And then turn it back over. And do a couple of these. I usually do three, one near the ends. And one in the middle. Oh yeah, I got my Color Street turkey nails on. My friend Anna Lou recently became a demonstrator. She has her Facebook page at Lou Anna's Legendary Lady Fingers. <laughs> Lou is her last name. Her husband is Chinese. And here we go. And 
then a couple of these from the same snowflake suite the blue adhesive back gems and there are some dark ones and light ones and I did light ones and I did smaller size Got one down over here it goes so well all these different shades of the balmy blue I like the iridescent or pearlescent there love it so you can see even the shading difference i think you can see oh i jogged my camera a little bit on these two but they both of these um, dsps look really good with this paper all right oh yeah i can show you the envelope okay oh yeah and when in case i forget to say it when you put your adhesive um on the top Oh, the tear and tape, don't take it off until you're ready to send it so it doesn't stick to everything. So then we have a 4x4 four four card. So we're going to look on here where 4x4 four four card size and then the paper size is 6 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths. So um, I have that size here. And then it says the score line for the 4x4 four four cards is 3.5. So that measurement is only necessary um, for the first time. So you punch. I do it first so I don't forget. You can go back and do it, but it's faster if you just remember. So then after you do your 3.5 on your first side, you just use this score mark. And it says score guide. And you line it up right there. Punch nice and firm. And then you... You line it up here where it fits into the, your groove, and then you will be in this groove here. Just trust it, and then drag it out till it's off the edge of the paper. And then you do that for the other two sides. Line up your score mark you just made with that score guide. Nice firm punch. Drag it out till the end. And then our last side. Line up right snug against the edge. Oh, and see here, I didn't quite... Get this all the way to the edge, but you can just go back in here and fix it up. Yeah, it will fold nicely anyways. And then um, you can see here you have one that will stick up and it looks so much prettier when it's rounded and not pointed. And since I don't know exactly which one, it's so quick to just, I just do them all on a square card because it, you do, it does kind of matter how you fold it up just so that I'll show you. So I fold them first so that I can see which way will look best for um, assembling the envelope. So we want to have, see how that one kind of sticks out there? So that's not going to be my bottom. But then there, that one, they match evenly and nothing is off center or anything. I don't know how that happens because it's a square card, but there is one or way at least that looks better and is, doesn't have one side being too long. So then I'm going to just bend this one down and then those, the bottom and the top are the ones that are going to get the tear and tape. And I just kind of run it along, pretend it's on there and to estimate my length, pull it out a little bit and see how much I think I need there we go and this one you need to take off the backing so it will stick okay and then that will stick to both my sides and keep those down and then these ones I'm not going to take off the backing Okay, then I have my cute little, on the square card, you do need to put different embossing, or different postage on it, sorry, because square cards cost more. I learned that with our wedding invites, I think it was, um, so it's nice and cute in there, and that is the second card. There we go. All right, let me... Slowly go over to the table, put these away, and yeah, get my little pile of Christmas cards. So if you just wanted to tune in for the two cards I'm making, um, you can sign off or you can stick around for my Christmas card showcase.
I'll put all the caps back on later. So to start off, I'll do the six cards for my upcoming class, the two I just made. And then um, I have four more in my class. If you'd like this class, just let me know by Friday and I'll save you a packet. I've got a little moose card here. And then this one is from Elf. It's like his suit. I thought that was so clever. I did not come up with this one. All of these, I, I actually, this one I made. But a lot of these cards I case from blogs and other demonstrators because it's so much fun. And then there's a stamp set that's got like old fashioned or movie quotes. And so this one is what he says, the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. I thought that was so funny. And then this is the new kind of shaker card where you use a clear envelope and it's super simple. Um, and then this was a returning set, the um, ornaments. So I thought that was some pretty paper, the Christmas gleaming paper. So that is, these six are $20 for the six cards. Let me know by this Friday if you'd like this class packet. And then the rest of my Christmas cards from this year, I tried to do 12 of each. Sometimes I got a little more, a little less. So I've got this card from our home. I forget what it's called. And then this one was from that too. This one is a little bit more, um, you know, popped up, time consuming. I don't think I did 12 of these. I think I might have just done one for a class or something, but I really like it. This was our host set from the holiday catalog. I loved the stockings hanging from the tree and using some of that plaid paper. I think this was a retired paper from the plaid paper from a year or two ago. Oh, got a repeat. Um, and then this was from last month's paper pumpkin kit. I really liked those ones with the die cut words and stuff. The paper pumpkin kits, um, they've come such a long way since they started forget what six or seven years ago and they don't seem like just a kit they seem like real you know um, handmade cards and, and not really um, sterile or anything this was one I think someone gave me and it just looks so pretty that I wanted to reuse it and not just save it for myself so I only have one of those and then these were retired dies that I had prepped a bunch and not actually made them and so I just put a bunch together from these leftover um, uh, background die things. And I love the glimmer paper shining through the big die cut like that. And then I did a version in purple with some gold, which I think is such a fun thing to do for Christmas, is doing different color versions. Silver and blue, I think, has become a pretty standard Christmas one. And this one I didn't dry or I didn't melt my embossing powder all the way and I smudged it, but I'm still going to send it. Because the glimmer paper makes up for this much. This also was last year paper. One thing that's fun about making Christmas cards all year is you can use your stuff even after it's technically retired um, from the holiday catalog because not everything carries over. So I really like doing that. And this also from that same set of paper. I think I just had some leftover supplies and I just threw together a card. And then this is some new stuff from this year. Um, the felt paper was super fun to work with. And then some of that subtle embossing folder and the, um, yeah, this was from that same set, the maybe per Christmas perhaps means a little bit more. That's what the who's say from that same set with the, um, I think it's called Christmas Means More, and with the singing loud for all to hear, that elf one, that was from that same set. If you want that one, if you like this, let me know and I'll tell you exactly what it's called. Um, oh, this is the ornament set again, that Christmas gleaming. Okay, a repeat. I didn't sort these out very well. Uh, I think I might have done that one too. And then these last chunk of ones are the same design. Is Smokey's tail getting in the... I think he is. Um, they're all the same design, but different um, colors and patterns. I just used up a bunch of different DSP and just picked um, cardstock to match it, which is kind of fun. I'll show them all together if they're still in the shot. There we go. Um, and then I got this one with some green cardstock on the top. And then some blue and a different sort of plaid back there. 
I really like this one. Brown with the red. I thought that was so fun. And then we have a mousse punch that made this go so fast. I love punches for mass Christmas cards. It's so quick and easy. So those, wow, it's not as many varieties it seems like. Or maybe that does seem like a lot to you. Um, but yeah, I try to do 12 a month. And then that comes out to be... Um, well, I kind of try to have them done in November so I can be writing them out after Christmas and send them out around December 1st. So that comes out to be, like, I'm so bad at math, 12 times 11. I don't know. <laughs> I think 11 times 11 is 120. It's a lot. It's like 125 or, or so Christmas cards. Um, so that's my goal. I usually send out 150-ish Christmas cards, so I kind of have to make them throughout the year. And then that kind of gives you, uh, you know, a reason to get in your stamp room, some motivation. And then I was frantically address them and write them out the week or so before and after November. Oh my gosh, what am I saying? Um, Thanksgiving and then try to mail them out before December 1st. So I've got them all made and now I have to start addressing them. Um, all right, so thank you for tuning in to this a uh, little bit longer Facebook Live since I started doing them, the two cards in the Christmas showcase. And if you would like any Christmas things, we are still doing our um, holiday catalog is good through the end of December. Um, you can order now. Today we have um, the online extravaganza. Most things in the catalog are 10% off. And then um, it'll ship to you in about a week and you'd still have time to make a few Christmas cards and get them out. You don't have to have them out as early as I like to. You don't have to send them out by December 1st, so you still got time. So yeah, let me know. My email is stephaniemackey2012 at gmail.com. And you can let me know if you'd like me to put an order in for you. Or you can order online yourself at um, smackey, M-A-C-K-E-Y, at stampinup.net. So thanks for watching.